on this channel, what I try and do is, you know, I try to have uh, high brow discussions about football, really get into, into the weeds on some of the X's and O's and all of this stuff. But sometimes you got to give your opinion about a weird thing that's going on. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So Caleb Williams, if you haven't heard, projected to go first overall. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to you know, critique everything about someone who's projected to go first overall just because that's what you do. But there's been some, quite frankly, bizarre critiques that have gone on with Caleb Williams that I'm going to be discussing in this video. So yeah, let's just jump into it. The most recent one, this, where you see him kind of dancing at a March Madness game. I'm going to pause it right here. As you see, the phone is pink. Uh, it says, you know, the, the uh, tweet you see, which I think is actually kind of funny, is Caleb Williams with a pink phone, pink nails, pink wallet, and lip gloss. Quarterback one is a bad bitch. Like, okay, th that's funny. But then you scroll down to the comments and you have, you know, uh, like these are just the top four that were on my feed. I don't know exactly how the Twitter algorithm works, but these were the top four I saw. Three out of the four of them are essentially saying he's not going to work in the NFL because of this, which is like confusing. Caleb Williams, after this kind of blew up, he had a response to it in what uh, was someone else's sort of, I believe, a video intended for Twitter that uh, Caleb Williams appeared on. Let's see what that phone is. What the phone is? Like? Let's, Let's see what color the phone is. Wall is white. The wall is white. Phone, phone is pink. Case is clear. What the fuck is that? Like? Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your, your girl love them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Caleb Williams not exactly uh, doesn't appear to be too broken up over this. Uh, you know, to people criticizing him, seems to have a solid uh, attitude about all of it, kind of joking around about it. But it is worth mentioning. This is not the first time Williams has caught the attention of you know certain people. Uh, he's you know had several moments that people have criticized. There was this one where he was, you know, crying after a tough loss with his, uh, you know, mom right here. There was also, you know, he was in a Dr. Pepper commercial where uh, he showed off his painted nails. I paused it right here. You see the nails being painted. That is something that he does as he paints his nails. Also during a GQ magazine uh, shoot, he wore a dress for one of the uh, photos. So that was also something that, you know, caught people's attention. In response, he came out and said, uh, I think the nails thing kind of took everybody by surprise. Williams21 tells people soon after filming a new ad uh, for his partnership, Dr. Pepper. I've been doing it before college, but it took everybody by surprise just because you don't always see male athletes who play football paint their nails. But I think it's just another way of expression. So yeah, that's, I mean, to me, kind of just the end of it. Like, is it something that is a little bit unusual that you don't often see, you know, uh, quarterbacks do? Yeah, it, it is. But like, when Joe Namath wore a fur, a fur coat, that was unusual. Worked out all right for the Jets. He's, you know, still the most recent quarterback to win a Super Bowl for them. I think it worked out okay. Uh, I even think about, you know, Cam Newton recently, another example of a guy who, you know, there's, that's, there's not just one uh, comparison you can make with Cam Newton and uh, Williams, of course, but we'll just talk about the one, which is both guys who are a bit uh, eccentric and will maybe uh, dress uh, in ways that you don't typically expect uh, the you know traditional quarterback uh, look to be. But uh, obviously, Cam Newton had a lot of success, won an MVP, went to a Super Bowl, uh, and had a lot of other good years as well for Carolina. So uh, certainly didn't seem to affect him. And again, you know, you know, Cam Newton was also considered a really good leader and people really liked him in the locker room to the point where uh, I think people didn't uh, want to sign him as a backup because he was too much of a leader and they didn't want to, you know, uh, take away from the attention of the starting quarterback was apparently the narrative that came out. For me personally, I, I kind of think that like, you know, to some degree, this is why athletes don't often show their personality. It feels like you know, a lot of them end up being kind of boring, but it's like, because when you show a personality, then it gets kind of ripped to shreds and it's, oh, can you, can, can, can it work uh, at the NFL level? I mean, to the people that are kind of, some people are saying like, well, I'm concerned that if he's not your traditional masculine quarterback, can he be a leader among men? But like, I guess my question would be, well, I mean, he's, he's been, you know, playing college football for a while now, you know, played college football for a while, didn't seem to hurt him there. Why would it hurt him at the NFL level? Uh, I, I just, I don't think it's, I don't think it's really anything to be honest. Especially when you see quotes like this, which is, what I love to see was the interaction with the other players, Eber Flew said, and this is about uh, Caleb Williams. Uh, you can see that, and we talked to every person that was on that team at the Senior Bowl. We interviewed them, and interviewed them at the Pro Day. We talked to those guys at dinner, and you can certainly see those players love him and respect him and what he's brought to that program. 
So any potential concern about that stuff, I mean, there's really no reason to believe it other than it's just like maybe I to me. So, you know, well, let's, you know, talk about who is getting concerned about this stuff. I mean, from what I've seen, looking at people that are, you know, I, every time there's a controversy, I always try to see if there actually is a controversy or if people just say there's a controversy, right? Uh, you know, the people that I've found that are criticizing Caleb Williams seemingly are mostly those like sports uh, channels that are kind of sports in quotes, but are really just kind of like right wing sports talking heads that like they kind of talk about sports, but from a conservative uh, mindset uh, is that's from the main people I've seen criticize him, which again, that 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 tracks, right? And listen, we could have the discussion about if, you know, men should be able to wear dresses or not. I, I think if you know this channel, you kind of know where I stand on all that stuff. You know, like, spoiler alert, I'm, you know, I'm sitting in a pink chair right here, right? So I'm not, you know, uh, maybe closer to Caleb Williams than uh, some other people. But let's even forget about all that right now. At the end of the day, if you don't like how he presents himself, okay, that's a conversation we can have. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a bad quarterback or like a reason he should be a bust or anything like that, like people are making it out to be. So some of the times I hear people criticizing this stuff, I'm kind of like, I don't think that you actually don't think he's a good quarterback. I think you just don't like that he paints his nails. To bring up the uh, the crying thing, I mean, like, I don't know. I was trying to think of like, uh, it's something that just popped up into my mind was just the, you know, uh, a very famous example, a recent example of a player crying after a big loss. The Brad Marchand photo. If you're a hockey fan, I mean, this is an iconic photo of him crying after losing Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. Brad Marchand, yeah, the guy who uh, did this in a game, uh, he also is someone who, you know, hey, he won a Stanley Cup. Things worked out all right for him, I think. But yeah, I mean, he is someone who has actually had multiple instances of crying after losses. Like, I guess you could say, like, oh, well, you shouldn't cry, you know, uh, with your mom. You should go to the locker room or whatever. Like, whatever. Like, again, Marshan didn't uh, go to the locker room. If Marshan's mom was out there, what would he have done, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, I think, like, again, if this is where we're at with prospects, where we're critic criticizing a prospect for caring and being so upset after a loss, he starts crying, like... I, that's not something I'm concerned about, typically. Uh, like, listen, I would also mention, I do think there are some, like, things that aren't, like, massive criticisms, but things I would, like, question. And I, I think there's valid reasons to criticize Caleb Williams. I think there's totally valid reasons to criticize Caleb Williams. For one thing, I think there's just there's, there are some tape issues that I have. I think his tape's mostly good, but there are some some critiques I have. Uh, but also, I mean, like even like some like you know, uh, there have been so he's already reportedly made over ten million uh, in college, and he's apparently uh, been in talks of trying to kind of change the rookie wage scale. His team has talked about that, and while there's been some debate, uh, kind of some he said he said about some of this stuff. Um, you know, the the reality is it appears possible that at least his team is looking into trying to get more. Again, there's a, uh, a a quote that came out that he was looking for an ownership ownership stake. I don't believe that's actually ever been confirmed, but it does appear that that's something they've at least looked into and kind of inquired about. Like, he also waited to the last day where you're able to declare for the draft to declare for the draft. So, like, a lot of people did that like a month in advance. He did it late. So, like, I think there's some things that, like, hey— not necessarily anything wrong, athletes trying to make their money, uh, you know, kind of waiting to the last second to make a decision, nothing wrong uh, inherently, just something that maybe if I was the Bears, I would just ask him about, try to get his opinion on it, try to see where he, you know, uh, like, is it possible that he's kind of focused on other stuff instead of football, which is, again, totally fine, but if you're drafting someone with the first overall pick, you might want someone who, you know, uh, is, is lives and breathes football instead of trying to make money, but again, it's possible he lives and breathes football, but also wants to make money, which is, of course, totally valid and, and you know, a fine thing for him to do. All I'm saying is that, like, again, I don't even like to do any of that stuff. I, I, I'm personally someone who says, let's just watch the tape. I have no idea any, who any of these players are. Let me just watch the tape and make uh, my decision that way. But if you are someone who likes to factor people's personalities into the mix, there are some, like, things you could criticize if you wanted. But then there's just some weird things that, like, I don't get why anyone's criticizing whatsoever. Well, I get why people are criticizing it. I just think it's dumb, so I want to make a video on it. But, yeah, uh, those are kind of my thoughts on all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.